The film opens with John in a dingy apartment in the South Bronx awakened by the doorbell ringing, she frantically answers the intercom but no one answers, so she advises everyone to stay indoors and stay hydrated with news of more heatwave deaths in her day, as well as the story of one such killer, who is targeting women with long dark hair, the killer leaves a letter to the police promising he hasn't done it yet, the doorbell rings again and John listens to the intercom but gets no response. Coming nothing else, hearing nothing, she checks outside the apartment, but the doorbell rings again in desperation, she answers the intercom to confront the man on the other end but is horrified when she opens the door, is, it goes away, and she closes it again, seconds later she hears the men arguing below, as the fight escalates, the building manager sees him peeking in and goes upstairs, John collects money from his drawer and throws the bill under the door, which the manager catches on the other side, realizing he's low on cash, John calls his friend Margot, borrows some money that Margot offers to meet and pay him, but John insists on sending it by mail, tearfully trying to convince Margot not to come, but Margot insisted and dropped the call, with June's apartment in such a state of disrepair, she has no choice but to ask her friend to clean it before refusing to move out, tying a rope to her garbage bag and dragging her to the building, drag in front, put it down but the bag becomes too heavy, and falls, due to which the rope burned on his palm, that afternoon, John woke up to the doorbell again, she curses at the intercom, but finally hears someone answer, she rings in Freddy, the new delivery boy who brings her groceries after paying and collecting them, she asked if Freddy rang her doorbell that morning, but he refuses, Jones asks Freddy to carry his trash can, in exchange for an extra three dollars and permission to use his sink while Freddy washes himself in. The bathroom, lives in style, clearly uncomfortable with anyone in his apartment, after Freddy leaves, John sees him walking down the street, greeted by men hanging outside the building after noticing that her cigarettes aren't in the grocery bags, she reports them to the grocery manager she salvages an old cigarette from her ashtray to compensate, during lunch, the news reports further cases of arson and murder in the area while reading the newspaper, she lingers on an ad for discreet dates but pulls herself from the idea the doorbell rings again, and June answers it, thinking it's Freddy but no one answers the intercom again, just as she turns away, the doorbell buzzes again angered, June threatens whoever is on the other end and calls 911 but when the operator asks what's her emergency, June hesitates, that evening, the news on TV, reports another victim of the serial killings happening in the city the criminal left another note for the police, greeting the People of New York City, the following day, Margot arrives at June's apartment, but June refuses to let her in worried for her friend, Margot assures her that she won't judge, finally convincing June to let her in Margot is shocked over the condition of the apartment, with books and garbage littering the floor the condition worries Margot further, and she offers June comfort June breaks down as she finally accepts someone else's help while Margot helps June cleaning up the apartment. She finds a copy of June's book, The Patriarch, June reveals more copies of the book and urges Margot to throw them away Margot hopes to keep the books, yet June has made up her mind about her works nevertheless, Margot leaves a copy of it on the bookshelf and another in her bag to bring home, in the late afternoon, Margot urges June to go out to dinner with her, but June isn't responsive alone, June takes a step outside her apartment for the first time and attempts to climb down. The stairs her legs are stiff, and her breath is heavy as she shakes in fear, June wakes up in bed, drenched in sweat from the nightmare June heads out of her bedroom and overhears Margot talking to someone on the phone about her hearing Margot telling someone she's sick makes June shaky and tearful, but when she catches her reflection in the mirror, she realizes how unwell she looks, later that evening, June and Margot share drinks and laughter June admits that she stayed in the apartment, Believing that she's safe here Margot laughs at this, knowing how the area is ridden with crime the apartment belonged to June's grandmother, who made it a haven for June during her childhood Margot is concerned that June is still clinging to her ways, which June challenges what else she can do the two get into a heated argument about their past careers, where June was a successful author and Margot struggled to get out of her shadow their argument is interrupted when the Doorbell buzzes again, this time more insistently June begs Margot not to answer it, so instead, she checks the front of the building, but no one is there the buzzing finally stops, letting the women relax knowing the dangers of living alone, Margot gives June a gun June is skeptical over it but accepts, that evening, June puts the gun under the floorboards next to her bed the following day, June finds Margot sifting through her manuscript, the manuscript astonishes Margot, who urges. June to finish it and get it published instead, 
June lights the manuscript on fire and tells Margot to leave, accusing her of enjoying June's misery. June removes her book from Margot's purse before shoving it back to her friend baffled. Margot leaves her encounter with Margot has June longing for the past she watches a recording of her interview during the height of her career four years ago her book, The Patriarch, earned fame after people speculated of the main character drawing. Similarities to June's father, this led to a criminal investigation of her father and his company, which resulted in June being shunned by her family the interviewer casually mentioned her father's passing, which June hadn't heard about until then June's reaction to this is televised to thousands of people June pauses the video focusing on the tears that were wetting her eyes on the screen. Later that day, June calls her publisher, Francesca, to ask for an advance Francesca denies as. June was given an advance for four years ago, yet she hasn't turned in another book June promises to get a manuscript done after a month to avoid paying a debt she takes out her old typewriter from the closet and gets ready to start her manuscript, for hours, June struggles to begin writing until she finally runs out of cigarettes Freddie delivers her the new pack of cigarettes. Promising that he didn't steal hers last time from her window, June watches as men fight across the street. June asks why Freddy is close with those men, but Freddy denies befriending them instead, he's simply not scared of them June notices Fred's burn scar, which he got during a building fire that killed his mother the building was set on fire by the owners, but it was never proven in court before he leaves, Freddy advises June to be careful, as she might become the target of the men's aggression that evening. The doorbell buzzes again June approaches it warily and turns on the speaker, hearing nothing but the street noises to pass the time, June drinks and smokes alone while listening to the radio sick of the awful news, she turns to a music station and starts dancing to the beat for a moment, she loses herself in the music until the song stops, and the street noises fill her ears again, days later, a police officer named Blake visits June to address the report she made a week ago the high crime rate in the area prevented the police from responding to her. Until now June invites him inside, where she shares how someone buzzes her doorbell constantly, even in the middle of the night she believes that someone is trying to intimidate her Blake suggests checking outside to see who it is, but she is scared of doing so since nobody has verbally threatened June, Blake can't report it as harassment instead, Blake offers an indecent arrangement, promising her protection in return he leans in to kiss June, who's frozen in fear fortunately, his. Radio alerts him about a fire nearby as Blake leaves, June curses angrily at him, June sits in front of her typewriter, and instead of working, she pours her rage on the paper her angered typing makes her rope burn sting, prompting her to change her bandages while preparing herself to get back to work, she notices the recorder under her desk she plays an old recording of herself speaking about society's self-destruction which sparks an idea, June works on her new manuscript throughout. The day, Finally achieving inspiration that's left her for too long the inspired author even ignores the mysterious buzzing on her door and works until late at night however, her luck burns out when the recorder malfunctions and destroys the tape, late at night, June hears music from the neighbor's window across the street from her window, she watches two people having sex the scene arouses her interest, and she begins touching herself the experience abruptly ends when she notices. Another man watching her from the window across the building, forcing June to hide out of fright, after the last night's events, June gives in the following day and calls the agency from the newspaper to get a partner for the evening that evening, the agency sends in Billy the two are awkward at first, and June even asks him to leave when he makes the first move but when Billy refuses her money, June takes the leap, and the two spend the night together having sex, after that, June plays a vinyl record of her grandmother singing June's grandmother acquired the apartment after the war and it became June's haven when her family had troubles when Billy asks her why she called for his services, June admits that she can't leave the apartment, fearing the damage she could cause out in the world this reminds Billy of his fear when his foster uncle left him in a utility shed covered in spiders the event resulted in his arachnophobia, until one day, he grabbed a spider from a pet shop and ate it, overcoming his fears sharing their stories brings them both closer, late that night, the doorbell starts buzzing again, waking up June and Billy Billy heads out to check who it is but doesn't find anyone there he suggests that maybe whoever's doing this is not tormenting her but instead encouraging her to go outside, the next day, June fixes herself up and starts writing again, this. Time feeling more confident about her work she continues her manuscript for the next few days, but her cash is depleting as the days go on still, she buries herself in work, hoping to get her life back together until finally, she finishes the manuscript she calls Francesca to report the good news, but her publisher refuses to speak with her, desperate, 
She hires Freddy to deliver her manuscript seeing the desperation in her eyes, Freddy bargains to get as much money as he can from. June in the end, June gambles the rest of her money to get the only copy of her manuscript to Francesca overwhelmed with emotions, June calls Margot's voicemail to apologize and tell her about the book to her surprise, a little girl answers the phone to tell her that Margot isn't home, later that day, June calls the grocery store to look for Freddy, but the manager claims they don't have an employee named Freddy there that evening, when the doorbell buzzes, June immediately answers. Hoping that it's Freddy, but no one responds to her again, a storm brews outside her apartment June looks outside, gazing at the small glimpse of the city from her window thunder blows, and the power goes out on the entire city not long after, raised voices from panicked citizens are heard outside her house as June lights candles around the apartment, more noises outside signify the rising chaos caused by the power outage even the phone lines are dead the store across the street gets looted and June can do nothing but witness it, the news on the radio reports more crimes happening throughout the city, with the heat and power outages causing people to panic from her window, she sees the situation escalating buildings are on fire from afar, and the looting just across from her becomes violent after the police arrive noises come from just outside June's store curious, she takes a peek before barricading herself inside when she goes back to her window, it's glowing. Orange the police car has been set on fire gunshots echo from afar, and suddenly, June finds Freddy running from a police officer, Freddy is beaten down in front of June's building desperate to catch up to him, June finally leaves her apartment and goes downstairs she reaches the front door to see the streets on fire carefully, she crosses the street and sees Freddy unconscious on the pavement but when he gets up, it turns out that the injured man is not Freddy another man steps. Out of the ruined store, eyeing her with hostility but leaves June alone amid the chaotic streets, June embraces the outside world for the first time in a long time, through an alley filled with burning rubble, she sees the sunrise from afar, it symbolizes the hope of a new beginning over the desolated area, months later, June is interviewed for her new book, Season in the Abyss, the interviewer asks her if the character in the book is based on herself, she coyly smiles, 